everyone, this is Cricket Song from Lunar Wisdom, and this topic for this video is going to be psychic vampires. Now, before I discuss this, I want you to understand that this is my view and my perception of psychic vampires. <clears throat> I am not stating that I have all the facts. This is my insight and my thoughts. Now, the definition of psychic vampire that I'm going to use for today for this topic is an individual who feeds off of the life force or chi or energy or aura of others. This energy can be in the form of physical energy, emotional energy, spiritual energy, mental energy, sexual energy, whatever form of energy, but it's the energy. The psychic vampire has also been labeled a psi vampire, a energy vampire, an emotional vampire, an empathic vampire, a sexual vampire, okay? Now, the reason why the psychic vampire feeds off or has or is compelled to drain or feed off others is because their energy system is inadequate and they cannot they do not have the ability to manifest enough energy themselves so they look to donors to feed off of to fill their core to be able to get them through and when this happens when they feed they get a burst of energy almost like drinking a cup of coffee so the person that they feed from then feels drained. There was a study done by the Parapsychology Foundation of New York that found certain people were highly skilled at deliberately tapping into and directly feeding upon the aura of others. By draining energy from another person's aura, they depleted the aura's energy resource, interrupting the capacity of new energy particularly when the interaction was prolonged. So what this study found was that if a vampire continuously feeds off a donor, then they will damage that person's aura so that that person's aura can no longer or has a difficult time or it impairs their core to create new energy. So what ends up happening is you, it's, it sort of creates a circle because then that person starts looking for other ways to fill their own aura and they could in fact become a psychic vampire themselves. It's sort of that circle of abuse. You know, when you see people in abusive relationships, sort of like that. Now understand that human energy is indestructible. You can never destroy human energy, but you can impede the ability to generate the needed energy for daily living. So the psychic vampire can never totally destroy the person's energy, but they can damage the core enough so that the person has a hard time creating their own energy. But you can, you can also correct that. There are ways that you can correct that and you can, um, uh, repair any damage done to your aura or your physical body. The person, the, the in, an individual, a human being, has great abilities to fix it. Now there is such a thing as an intentional psychic vampire and an unintentional psychic vampire. Now the intentional psychic vampire is someone, and here's some characteristics, these are only a few um, and just because a person has these characteristics doesn't mean that they are a psychic vampire for sure, but they're pretty clear signs that they may be. The person will be manipulative, devious, cunning. They may be arrogant, narcissistic, controlling, stubborn. You would label them a user. You would label them power hungry. That would be someone who might very well be an intentional vampire. The unintentional vampires out there, psychic vampires, are the ones that have so many questions. They're constantly asking you questions, questions, questions. And when they are looking for the answers to these questions, they have nothing to offer you in exchange. So in this way, they are taking, they are constantly taking. 
They have nothing to offer, they just take. And they may be very disorganized and feel very helpless and say that they're helpless and disorganized because they're waiting for you to come in and, and rescue them. So that may be characteristics of an unintentional psychic vampire. They're still very draining, but they are not doing it in a manipulative way. Well, they are, but <laughs> unintentionally. Both of these types of people, psychic vampires, tend to be negative and coming from a place of lacking. They see their life is lacking, they may see the world is lacking, and they very, very have a very pessimistic view of things and a very pessimistic or negative perspective. And again, that is because I feel that they're lacking within so that's how, you know, the world is a mirror of what's going on inside of us. So if they are looking around and they see the world as a very dreary place and the world lacks a lot of things, then they feel that they see that because they are lacking. And as I said before, they are lacking. They don't have the ability to manifest the energy that they need. So they're looking for an outward source of that and they're feeding from that. Now, a psychic, what you also need to understand, if you feel you have a psychic vampire in your life, you need to understand psychic vampires cannot feed or drain from someone who is an unwilling participant. This plays in with the law of attraction. If you don't allow someone to feed from you, then they're unable to feed from you. And you may say, well, this person is very draining and I don't allow it. But on some level, whether it's a conscious or an unconscious level, on some level, you are allowing this to occur. Your attitude may be what is allowing them to feed from you. Okay, there, my view is there are no victims ever in life. There are no victims. We manifest our life experience and that includes if you are being drained by a psychic vampire. You're allowing it on some level. You may level. feel that you are being drained by a psychic vampire. How can you stop this? Or how can you ensure that you have things in, in line so that you're not being drained? And let me point this out to you. If you are a psychic empath and you don't have your shields and your boundaries set, chances are you have been drained by a psychic vampire. Whether the person was an intentional psychic vampire or an unten unintentional psychic vampire. Psychic empaths, if you are not secure, you are very open and you are in a state of allowing. Constantly in a state of allowing and a psychic vampire will seek you out and feed from you. And that's one of the reasons why you feel very drained if you don't have things in line. So if you've watched my series on psychic empaths, then you all, some of this information will be very, very familiar to you on how to ensure that you are not being drained or fed, fed off of by psychic vampires. First and foremost is you need to know yourself. You need to have your set boundaries. I said this in that video too. Make sure you have clear boundaries and it's okay to say no. You need to say no sometimes. There is, a, there is a scale. On one hand, we have selflessness. And on another hand, we have selfishness. Selflessness, selfishness. To be completely selflessness puts you in the martyrdom. You're a martyr. You are a doormat. You say yes to everyone and everything, and you are probably constantly drained when you are selfless all the time. If you are selfish all the time, 100% of the time, you may be cold, you may be shut off, you may be very um, alone because you have set yourself off from everybody else because you're only thinking of yourself. There's a balance. When I say it's okay to be selfish, 
It is, but of course you're going to temper that with some selfishness, selfish, self, selflessness. You want to be balanced. There are times you're going to do for others, but there's times you're going to do for you. You need to find that balance for yourself. That's part of setting boundaries. Sometimes you say no, sometimes you say yes. Sometimes you say right now, not right now, but I'll get to that later. If you lack assertiveness, which goes with the selflessness, you never say no, you never assert yourself, you're going to be a target for those who are looking to drain you of your, your energy because you won't say no anyway, so they might as well take it from you. Make, your, make sure you are healthy, keeping yourself healthy mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, making sure you take care of yourself, making sure you're eating right, making sure you're getting enough sleep, making sure you are you know, feeling good about yourself, feeling good making sure you're boosting your immune system. If you feel like you're coming down with something, make sure you're boosting that in some way. You can eat healthy, there are herbs. Echinacea is a great herb to boost that immune system if you're starting to feel down. Being aware of the people you associate with. Not only the people you call yourself friends, but the people you may associate yourself with. Understanding and watching their behaviors, understanding their motives for things knowing that if you just oh, don't get a good feeling about someone, trust your instinct. Don't second guess yourself. If you're not, if you don't have a good vibe from someone, then you shouldn't associate with them because chances are there's an inner guidance that you're following that's telling you you should stay away from them. Then maybe you should. Take responsibility for your life, your actions, your thoughts, and your words, not shifting blame understanding that you are the one who is manifesting what you are doing. You are the one who is saying what you're saying. Your actions are your actions. And that person made me do it. And that person made me do it while I couldn't help myself. Yes, you can. You can help yourself. Take responsibility for your choices. Take responsibility for what you're saying. Take responsibility for your behaviors. This will make you more assertive. It will make you more balanced. You won't be so selfless or selfish. You'll be finding that middle line. And shield yourself. Making sure that if you're going into a situation where you know there are going to be psychic vampires or people who are draining you, shield yourself. And you can do this with wearing certain colors are more shielding, using that color magic. Um, Stones, crystals, herbs are very good too. Carrying herbs, uh, symbols. For me, the pentagram, the pentacle is a wonderful protection symbol. The goddess, my amethyst. I mean, I am constant, hematite. I am constantly making sure I'm grounded and shielded because I am a psychic empath. So I want to make sure I have my boundaries set. I do not want people feeding off of me and throwing their crap on me. I want to make sure I'm shielded. Doing visualization of shielding when you're leaving your home or returning. Um, all those types of things will help you feel grounded and centered and balanced and boundaries up so that if you're going to experience an interaction with a psychic vampire, whether you are knowingly going into it or not, then you will not be a host or an unwilling donor. The, this is my perspective on psychic um, vampires. I know there are people out there that think it's cool to be associated with the fact that they're a vampire, but I can tell you this, I don't associate with psychic vampires knowingly. I don't find them to be cool. In fact, I would love to help those who feel that they are a psychic vampire find balance within them. Because for me, being a witch means being in control of my life. And when I hear that people label themselves a psychic vampire, that is telling me that they are not in control of their life. They have a lacking 
within them and they are looking to others to fill it. That's just my feelings and my perspective. It may be right or wrong for you, but it's definitely right for me. And as always, I love you all. Thank mm -hmm. you.